Hi everybody, this is another natural selection video and this time I'm focusing on selection pressures. So in this example I'm going to be using frogs um, as my population to help us understand what we mean by selection pressures. So here we've got our frogs um, and their environment consists of lily pads which they need um, and obviously they're in some sort of pool of water. So what do we mean by a selection pressure? Basically any environmental factor that can affect whether or not individuals survive or do not survive. So this idea of differential survival um, is where some individuals survive because they have characteristics which are more advantageous in that environment than other individuals. Selection pressure acts on the phenotypes, but because phenotypes are caused as a result of the genotypes, then that means that when you have a selection pressure, it's going to affect the allele frequency in the population. And really important here is a selection pressure um, can only result in differential survival if you have variation in the phenotypes. So my frog population here all look identical, but we have to understand that, of course, phenotype can mean many different things. It doesn't just mean uh, what it visually looks like. It could be differences in their metabolism. Um, it could be differences in their ability to reproduce. So phenotypes aren't always visible, but there must be variation in the phenotypes in order to have differential survival. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at intraspecific competition. So this is a group of different selection pressures uh, which result because you have um, overproduction of offspring. So you always have more individuals born than end up surviving uh, because they are competing within themselves, within their population, within their species for particular resources. Um, so for example, food is a very obvious resource that individuals compete for. So here we've got a population of some kind of bug. And if we've got this many bugs here, then all of our frogs are able to survive. So there's plenty of food for them um, and they're, they're not dying as a result of lack of food. But if that food population decreased for some reason, then suddenly we would find that some of those frogs are outcompeted. So that those poor little frogs there, for some reason, are not able to compete as well. It could be because um, maybe they are not as good at sitting still and waiting for the prey. So the prey flies away because they get seen. Um, it could be that maybe they're not as good at catching. So maybe there are differences in their tongues or, or differences in their reaction speeds. There's some difference um, between these frogs here and these frogs here. So intraspecific competition in terms of food resources causes differential survival. And so whatever alleles these frogs had, which enabled them to outcompete the other ones and survive, they are more likely to then be passed on because they're going to be able to reproduce. This poor frog here, his lily pad, for some reason, has vanished. It's not there. So what we're looking at here is intraspecific competition in terms of some sort of habitat resource. So in the case of lily pads, that might be where they have to uh, breed. It might be somewhere where they can get shelter. Something in their habitat they're competing for. So because there are now only three lily pads and four frogs, they're competing. And this frog is not as good at competing. It's not able to um, displace the other frogs. Maybe this frog is not able to show such dominant behavior. Uh, maybe it's not as aggressive. And therefore, because it isn't able to um, get a lily pad for itself, it's going to die. We've now got three frogs left. These two little frogs um, end up mating with each other. This frog here is unable to compete successfully for a mate. And remember all of these things, all of these, whether they're sort of aggressive behaviors, mating behaviors, they are all linked to the genes that the individuals have. So if this frog is unable to compete successfully for a mate, it's because this frog hasn't got maybe the right um, behavioral characteristics which are linked to their genes. Um, maybe it's too small and the frogs favor um, bigger 
mates. Uh, maybe there's something about the frog's courtship ritual which is not as attractive to the other frogs. So something means that this frog here um, is not, doesn't have the advantageous phenotypes and therefore the advantageous alleles. It can't mate um, and it therefore is not able to reproduce. Other things that can be selection pressures are climatic factors. So I've picked frogs as an example because amphibians are very, very sensitive to changes in um, pollution um, because they absorb gases through their moist skin. So if we see an uh, uh, increase in air pollution in their environment, then that could have a very negative effect on our frogs. And it probably means that some of our frogs are going to die. Maybe these frogs that survive, maybe they have a slightly better, um, maybe there's some sort of immune response that they're better able to cope with. Maybe they just have a better ability um, to uh, somehow metabolize toxins. Who knows? But for some reason, this frog has less advantageous characteristics when it comes to a change in the pollution levels. There could be a change in the levels of sunshine so the temperature could increase and if that happens then that's going to affect our frogs and maybe this frog is less able to cope with increases in temperature for some reason doesn't have the advantageous characteristics if you get an increase in temperature maybe there's also an increase um, so a decrease in water levels so climatic factors can be to do with sort of temperature it can do to do with rainfall water levels um, water currents, it can be due to the wind, light intensity, anything like that, that frog is not able to survive. So this frog here had more advantageous characteristics. It survived despite changes in climate. It's more likely to then pass to reproduce and pass on those advantageous alleles. Okay, we've got two final selection pressures. The first is predation. So these frogs are predated by some kind of eagle and uh, some of those frogs are going to be less able to evade the predator. Uh, maybe they're not, not as good at spotting the predator. Maybe there's something about their skin colour which makes them stand out more. Um, maybe they're not quick enough at jumping off the lily pad into the water when the eagle swoops down. And the final selection pressure to look at is disease. So again, remember a lot of these things we're talking about their characteristics, it's the phenotype, but it's not necessarily visible to us. So if a new disease is introduced into the environment, then some individuals may have better immune systems than others. And some individuals don't, and therefore they succumb to a disease. So this poor little frog here did not have such a good immune system. It succumbed to a disease and therefore dies. So all of those selection pressures are acting on the phenotypes, but because the phenotypes are a result of the alleles that are present, when some individuals um, are unable to reproduce and pass on their alleles, that means that we get a change in the frequency of alleles in the gene pool over time. So selection pressures result in a change in allele frequencies, and that change in allele frequencies is what we call evolution.